I've been working on the Volkswagen engine for the Mobile Dimension sawmill. I bought that sawmill several years ago. It had been sitting for a while. Parts of it were kind of rusty, paint peeling off and stuff. So I decided I wanted to get everything cleaned up before I started using it. So I started cleaning parts of it up, sandblasted some sheet metal and some other parts and repainted them and was making a start on getting it cleaned up ready to go when something else came up and I had to put it aside for a while. Well of course as things go I never did get back to it. Well, I just decided to get back to work on it again and I got to looking at it and it hadn't healed itself up any over the period of time that it sat there. It had actually gotten worse. There was sawdust under on top of the engine and on pieces that didn't get cleaned off properly and, and over the years the moisture had reacted with the sawdust and the top of there that engine case is magnesium and it had started corroding pretty good some of the other parts were well they weren't much worse than they were before but they were kind of rusty and stiff so I would pulled a bunch of parts and pieces off of it cleaned the engine up and painted it and then I sandblasted a lot of the parts and pieces and repainted them Kind of got done with most of the peripheral stuff the other day, and then the power went out here, so I couldn't really do anything inside with the power out. It's too dark in here, to, especially with my old eyes, to work on anything in here now. So we went and picked some uh, lingonberries yesterday afternoon. We found a pretty nice patch taking the dogs out for a walk this summer and figured it was about time to go pick those, so we spent the afternoon picking lingonberries. I worked on my son's power saw, chainsaw. Uh, a friend of mine gave my son uh, a still 038, I think it is, that was his dad's that hadn't run for years and it needed some work on it so I helped my son with it and we got it running, tuned up and running good. Well, anyway we had pretty productive time while the weather was nice here. Now the weather's supposed to turn off rainy again. Clouded up today, it's still nice out but it's supposed to start raining tonight and we're supposed to get between three and six inches of rain the next couple of days here so figured I'd go ahead and get started in on this engine again. There's two things I need to do. I need to finish cleaning the paint on that oil cooler and get it painted but I wanted to work on this distributor. This was just turning too hard. It's just too stiff. Uh, it turns but it shouldn't be that stiff. So I started disassembling the distributor and it's a later model distributor. It is a flywheel uh, distributor, not a vacuum advance. It's got a um, flywheel advance in here, or the, the weights in here. So I've, anyway, I said I've started taking that apart. I've got the breaker plate out of there, the, the uh, condenser out of there, and then I've got the spring loose from the counterweights in there. And so I would take this pin out of this shaft here now. The do drive dog is uh, there. It's held in with a pin and the pin is kind of captured with a spring wound around a groove right here. So I'm going to take that off and then I can pull that shaft out of there and clean that out. Make sure those bearings are cleaned out in there and that's oiled and get all the gunk cleaned out of the inside of that that's keeping it from moving freely and that should work a lot better then. So this drive dog on here is kind of, I don't call it polarized, you can see it's offset from the center line here over to one side so it can only go in that distributor one way but we can put this shaft in there 180 degrees out. Anyway I'm going to go ahead and line this up and make a mark on this drive dog here so we get it lined up properly with this notch. This is where the, the uh, rotor notch is in there to index that firing order on the distributor. Anyway, I'll work on that. This thing, get this thing all cleaned up. I'll have to wait and see. I wasn't planning on powder coating this because there's bearings in here. I'll get that apart and see what it looks like once I get it apart. Well, it got down to freezing here one night. Last couple nights it hasn't quite got down to freezing but it's close so when I came out here to work in the shop even though I waited until afternoon and it warmed up outside it was still pretty chilly in here the shop is pretty well insulated so it holds heat in pretty good but it also stays cold for a long time so it's kind of chilly in here to work so I went and got a little wood and, and got a fire going in my stove the first fire I've had in it all year well since 
probably April, I guess. But anyway, got it warmed in here, up in here now to where it's comfortable. So I'll turn that thing down and uh, get back to work. I cleaned these distributor parts up a little bit. They had a lot of grease and stuff on them, oil, dirt. I was going to try to polish this distributor housing up, but once I got to looking at it, it had some pitting in it, some corrosion on it, and some impregnated crud. So I went ahead and sandblasted it, cleaned it up, that and the hole down. Oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and powder coat those. Well, I got some rubber plugs to plug in through that shaft. I, well, I got to looking at that once I got it apart and it has steel bushings in it instead of bearings. I was worried about oil being in bushings and coming out, boiling out when you heat it up and stick it in the oven. I set it over on the stove for a little bit to heat up to see what would come boiling out of it, try to get it cleaned up. And I forgot that is a casting. Castings are porous. Plus it has a bunch of pits in it and stuff and oil kind of boiled out of it. So that was good. Nothing came out from around those bearings, but I did have some little pits and holes and stuff in there that oil came out of. So that was good. I was able to see those and get those cleaned up. So I'll go ahead and wash this down with some Prepsol, some Acrylaclean, and uh, get it powder coated. Well, there's the distributor housing and the hold down plate. They look a lot better now than they did. The hold down plate still had CAD plating on it and stuff, but it was kind of rusty, especially around this tube here where the bolt goes through there to hold it, clamp it tight. That distributor housing looks a lot better. I'm probably going to have to take it up, maybe put it on the lathe and trim off this powder coat here on this shaft so that it'll fit down into the engine block. That coating on there is thick enough now on there where it it won't, don't want to go down in there very well. Well, I got all the other pieces over in the ultrasonic cleaner getting washed out. They actually, they looked pretty bad when I took them apart, but once I started wiping them down with a rag and some cleaner, the, it was mostly just grit and grime on there, old grease and stuff. There's supposed to be a felt in there in between those uh, bushings that uh, wicks the oil up, that holds the oil and wicks it up onto that to lubricate those bushings and that wasn't in there so i will got to see what I can do about about that. I tried fitting this distributor into the pocket that it goes in into the engine and it wouldn't go down in there and I didn't expect it to with that paint on there. So I took this up to the basement and put it on the lathe and turned it this base down. I didn't turn all the paint off of it because it wasn't concentric and I didn't put it in the four jaw chuck to try to center it or anything. I just put it in there and turned it enough to turn the paint off of it and got it down to dimension. It slides real well down into that cavity now. There's no excess play in it or anything. It slides down in there smoothly. I took it and run a, a bit across the face of this and just face this off a little bit. That was a little bit rough. The paint was a little bit rough there and then that uh, face there was a little bit rough. So I just, I didn't take hardly anything off. You can see the paint still there in spots. So I just polished that up and then it was rough in here on the inside on that surface there and I took the boring bar in there and just faced that off so it's nice and smooth in there. So this thing should work better right now. Uh, my wife is up looking through her sewing stuff to see if she can find some thin felt. Uh, we need to make a, a wick in there for that oil wick in that, that goes in there in that uh, for that shaft to lubricate that shaft. I put these parts in uh, an ultrasonic cleaner and they got most of the grease off of them pretty good. This breaker, points breaker plate, it come out really good. It looked like it was going to be kind of nasty, but it came out really clean, really nice. This portion here, this main shaft, it was still a little bit grungy up in here underneath these flywheel arms, these weights, counterweights. So I wound up taking those off one at a time uh, so that I could put them back in the respectively proper positions. Anyway, I took those off. I had to wipe a little bit of the old grunge and grease and stuff off of them, and then I put some fresh grease in there on those pins and got them set up there so they're moving a whole lot better now than they were. The shaft here looks, all in all is pretty good. That's looking pretty good. That's working a lot better than it did. It's still got a little bit of rust on it but 
that's the way that's going to be. So this top portion here, that had a felt in it, it the oil that felt is a wick that drops down to oil this piece as it pivots on here. Um, and that felt was, well I forgot I didn't take that out before I put it in the cleaner so it had solvent in it but it was pretty dirty. Uh, I took that out and cleaned it out, uh, washed it with some starting fluid and squeezed it and got it pretty clean so that's got to go back in there. As I was looking at this, this cam, this is a cam right here, it's a four lobe cam and that's what opens the points to fire the cylinders. So that cam had some pitting on it and some rust on it. Yeah, I almost put it back in there, but I decided I didn't really like that too well because that is, I mean, it would wear off and smooth out with, with use. But this is just a phenolic or plastic rider here. This portion here, the points is what rides on that cam. And that's what opens and closes those points. And that would wear out. So I took this up, put it on the lathe, and I got some thousand wet or dry. I put a strip in there and polished that up a little bit. And then I had some color sandpaper, some 1500. Polished it up some more and then took some flits and put on a piece of paper towel and finish polishing up with the flits. And it's been a long time since I used that stuff. I used to use it on the slides and triggers and stuff on uh, pistols and guns when I'd tune them up years ago, but I haven't done that for 30 years, so I'd forgotten how, but that stuff polishes up pretty good. So that looks a whole lot better. It's got pits in it now, little teeny pits in it in a few spots, but they're polished off so they're not abrasive like they were before. So this can all go together now, but it's time to take the puppies out for their evening run. And the day is about done here, so... Okay, I'm gonna go. Getting this distributor put back together, I've got the cam portion of it put back onto the shaft. I lubricated that up with some ultra -sick, slick lube on the shaft in there and then put that back together. There's a little thrust washer that goes in on the top of that and then a little keeper goes in there. That was kind of a challenge to get in there but we got that and then the felt wick stuffed back down in there and I put a few drops of uh, just 10 weight oil in there for that. That wicks down in there to lubricate this when it's pivoting and down on the thrust washer that goes on the bottom of that. So next thing is to put this together in here in the distributor housing. Well down inside that distributor housing uh, between those two bearings I guess there's supposed to be a felt wick in there and there was not one in there when I took it apart. I could order one but it'd take me a week or two to get it. Well, I asked my wife if she had any felt. She got to looking around in her sewing stuff and she couldn't find anything, but she did find this little stocking that we made up one time for at Christmas. She doesn't want that anymore. It's just taking up space. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself a wick out of this. So that'll work. Now this oil gets pumped in here into this hole goes up between those two bearings and that wick holds it and uh, lets it kind of flow out onto the two bearings to keep the, those lubricated. Now let's see if I can get that in there without taking that wick out of there. Oh yeah that one in there just fine. It's going in there perfect. Now the dog can go on there like that. There we go. Now I scratched the dog on there before, earlier, right there, to line up with uh, the notch in there, just like that. Now I think this I think this pin is tapered. When I drove it out of there, it would drive in one way, but it wouldn't drive the other. So there we go. I got the drive dog on there. Well, now there's this spring that goes on there for a keeper that goes on there just like that. I think what that does as much as anything else, it's supposed to keep that pin in there, but there's some, quite a bit of movement in that uh, drive dog there, and I think that keeps that pin from sticking out the end there and maybe getting in 
to the engine case there and, and causes some problem in there. So this thing spins a heck of a lot easier than it did before. Uh, that feels good. It's oiled in there and it's smooth. The distributor is all back together now. I uh, cleaned the points up a little bit. They had a little bit of corrosion, a little bit of burning on them. Of course some rust and stuff on them. I got them set to 16 thousandths. Put a little bit of grease on there around that cam. So anyway, that's really nice. That turns freely now. That was stiff in the cob before, so I'd say that's pretty darn good. I can put the rotor back on and the cap on it. I start getting ready to, well I still got to clean up that oil cooler. Yeah, that distributor is a lot nicer. That thing turns and spins just beautiful now. It's smooth as it can be. That was hard to turn before. So I'm happy with that.